We are at task number 12, security misconfigurations, which is part of WASP top 10 from 2021 module, which is part of the complete beginner path on Try Hack Me. And we have security misconfigurations. Security misconfigurations are distinct from the other top 10 vulnerabilities because they occur when security could have been appropriately configured, but was not. Even if you download the latest up-to-date software, poor configurations could make, could make your installation vulnerable. Security misconfigurations include poor configured permissions on cloud services like S3 buckets, having unnecessary features enabled like service pages, services pages, accounts or privileges, default accounts with unchanged passwords, error messages that are overly detailed and allow attackers to find out more about the system. Not using HTTP security headers. Yeah, so I presume this one will go through the cheat sheet. Not necessarily, but uh, for the secure headers, there is an awesome cheat sheet. Cheat sheet series, we see secure response headers. Uh, here you can read more about the security headers in a condensed, concentrated way. This vulnerability can often lead to more vulnerabilities such as default credential giving you access to sensitive data, XML entities or command injection, XML external entities or command injection on admin pages. For more information, read the top 10 entry for security misconfigurations. And here we are in the security misconfigurations page on a wasp where you can read more about it right preventions descriptions example scenarios let's read one the application server comes with sample applications not removed from the production server these sample applications have no security flaws attackers used to compromise the server. Suppose one of these applications is the admin console and default accounts weren't changed. Boom, there you go. In that case, the attacker logs in the default password and takes over. Debugging interfaces. Common security misconfiguration concerns the exposure of debugging features in production software. Debugging features are often available in programming frameworks to allow the developers to access adv advanced functionality that is useful for debugging an application while it's being developed. Attackers could abuse some of those debugging functionalities if somehow the developers forgot to disable them before publishing their applications. One example of such vulnerability was allegedly used when Patreon got hacked in 2015. Five days before Patreon was hacked, a security researcher reported to Patreon that he had found an open debugging interface for a uh, WorkZoog console. WorkZoog is a vital component in Python-based web application as it provides an interface for a web server to execute the Python code. WorkZoog includes a debug console that can be accessed either via URL or forward slash console. Or it will also be presented to the user if an exception is raised by the application in both cases. The console provides a Python console that will run any code you send to it. For an attacker, this means you can execute commands arbitrarily. And here we have an application to port 86 that raised the console. And here we can see the interactive console, right? The print function in TryHackMe. Practical example, we have this virtual machine showcases security misconfigurations as part of the top 10 vulnerability list. We navigate to our uh, vulnerable IP and try to exploit the security misconfiguration to read the application source code. So we go to the vulnerable machine and we access the console. Okay. Uh, we use the list. All right. And we port, we import, here is the entire command. We import operating system and we print uh, OS Poppin uh, list to see the long format. And we then read and we close it. This should work. There you go. We have executable rights for templates. We have the DB. We also have the requirements. Right. Basically, we what is the database file name? 
the one with the <laughs> uh, to do dot db do we need extension yeah modify the code to read the contents of the app pi file which contains the application source code what is the value of the secret flag variable in the source code well we just say here let's see if we can use the uh, pi all right let's see this is a um, a little program so from flask all right read the templates request redirect uh, we have the secret flag just a tiny misconfiguration which will copy and we place it over here and uh, this one we have to complete okay we have the project rules uh, project root variable which is set to all right the database also we have it over there app configuration database uri and we have the class to the db model id okay okay so this little application is allowing certain um, http methods and then basically um, adds deletes or um, creates add and deletes the to the database to the to do database yeah this is basically it so See you in vulnerable and outdated components.